The ethics of shark feeding might seem pretty niche, but in the world of shark diving and conservation, actually it's a real hot topic. Many would think that as a natural history filmmaker, you should be keeping your distance and not in any way getting involved in an animal's life, and I can, I can see that. So I'd like to go through how I feel about it. This is not based on peer review science, it's purely subjective and based on experience. Uh, but I'd also love to know how you feel. So please write in the comments below, let me know what you think, uh, and I'll do my very best to have a look. My very best and very favorite shark encounters have always been wild ones. So whether it's schooling scalloped hammerheads off Cocos or the Galapagos, if it's great shippers of silky sharks in Socorro, whale sharks in the Azores, you know, the sardine run, all of these experiences are ones that uh, are, are not baited in any way, that are completely natural, and you just happen to be an observer in a wild animal's world. And those big, grand spectacles take a lot of time and a lot of money, and it's beyond the budget of many people. So um, other shark dives have to be considered incredibly valuable for what they can achieve in bringing people into the whole sphere of shark conservation. So let's start at the beginning. You know, does shark feeding influence behavior? Yes, unequivocally go to Triangle Rocks in Bimini in the Bahamas, I have been doing for 20, 20 odd years, and the second you rock up, just your boat noise will have attracted 15, 20 Caribbean reef sharks. If you go 500 meters away to North Turtle, which is topographically identical, you can take a bait box down to the bottom and you won't see a single shark. Um, Places like Tiger Beach that I've again been going to for 20 years, you can see the change in the animal's behavior there. So when we first started out there, we were using chum, but not feeding, certainly not hand feeding. It was necky at dusk and dawn when the sharks went into their, their natural predatory mode. But the rest of the time, it was it was a exciting but cruisy encounter. Every time I've been back there, the sharks have got bolder, they've got more pugnacious, they're expecting food. And, you know, occasionally things like this will happen. Stay for your fin, sight, no, draw on your foot, draw on your foot, seriously. Whoa, 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 sight, sight, sight. So that one individual shark was with us all day. It was noticeably different in its character to the others. It had hooks and lines coming out of its mouth, which might have been compromising its feeding. But you could see it coming in and, and actually trying to take a sneaky bite out of us. And... I feel that there's there's been a few times with tiger sharks that have been given pause to, to think that they are they are not the animals they are so often now portrayed to be, particularly on social media. You know, this whole kind of trend for redirecting tiger sharks is all well and good. It's a great skill to have, but it gives a very false impression of what tiger sharks do and what they're capable of. Um, I have just once in all the years that I've been working with tigers seen one actively hit something at the surface like a great white breaching hitting it at 20 miles an hour you would not be redirecting an animal like that going hard it doesn't happen often but when it does it is a serious serious sight um there's also lots of other tiger dives that i, I think are just too much so here in the indian ocean there is a relatively new upcoming dive site it's called formula um spelt fuvamula but it's pronounced formula it's one of the southern islands in the maldives and the tiger dive there is right at the mouth of the harbour in comparatively shallow water. Big tiger sharks, uh, they're fed, they're baited in, and the, the visibility is average. Sometimes it's not great. Um, we've had boats going right over the top of our heads while we've been diving on the bottom, which is pretty freaky. And on the last dive of the last day, um, we all of a sudden had a group of tourists put in half of whom were at the surface in life jackets thrashing around. Uh, the other half were on the bottom, but clearly didn't know what they were doing. And we all got out as fast as we could because we were certain that something bad was going to happen. It didn't, but I kind of feel that there it's, it's just a matter of time. And there, there is a bigger implication there because if someone gets hurt in formula, it, it will almost certainly have ramifications for the shark sanctuary in the Maldives, which is an incredibly important one. Uh, particularly important for manta rays and whale sharks. You know, they're protected here, but just a few hundred miles away in Sri Lanka is the biggest manta ray fishery in the world. So this sanctuary is essential. But last year, the fisheries minister here intimated that it was possible that it 
could be brought to a close it could be rescinded and and certainly you know any ammunition towards that like a fatal shark attack um could bring to an end this incredibly important conservation hotspot um so those are some of the the negatives there are many many more and they are considerable but let's think about some of the positives so in another shark sanctuary in bimini in the bahamas um the sharks there are incredibly important to the local economy it's been worked out that a decent sized shark caribbean reef shark could be worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, through its lifetime alive and maybe five hundred dollars uh, if sold as fish food um but step that up to some of the big great hammerheads um, which are around for a long time which are not in great numbers and which draw people in from literally across the globe and they might be worth 2.8 million dollars through their lifetime to the economy there shark diving as a whole 150 million dollars it's a substantial part of the gdp and i have um met with some of the senior people in the bahamian government they're all good people but first and foremost they want economic growth they want you know food and and cash for their people the main reason the shark sanctuary is still there is because shark diving it brings in punters and brings in money and if it ceases to do that then i think the shark sanctuary would again be in danger it would be in danger for sport fishing tournaments and the kind of things that would would wipe out the sharks there so so quickly um and that is a tragedy more than anything because you know we're starting to get to know the characters there as if they're friends you know you, you wait for the return of Scylla and Queen and Gaia these huge females which scientists have, have shown um, are carrying significant amounts of pups they're critically endangered and the second they leave the sanctuary come April they'll be swimming north into the the waters of North America the Carolinas and they could be caught on a on a, a hook and line they could be sold as sawfish steaks. They could be, um, you know, fried up as fish and chips or just chucked back in the water, highly, highly stressed or, or potentially dead. Indeed, um, Atlas, one of the well-known male uh, great hammerheads this year that we were filming with, had a, a gaff scar running all the way down his side, showing that he had been caught and then gaffed and, and got rid of. Um, and, you know, we, we could lose those sharks the second they swim out of the sanctuary. But if the sanctuary goes, then they are basically running the gauntlet for, for the entirety of their lives it would be really really challenging for them to survive at all in the future the kind of diving that happens in the bahamas uh, is it has to be baited you know i've dived the great hammerhead dive site without any food there and it's just a sandy bottom you don't see anything at all um and you know that is what brings in the punters um as to how um it compromises a a shark's life to be fed uh, that's something i have more of a clear kind of feeling on if you see any big predator in the wild um it will have a coterie of other animals bugging it non-stop through its life that is what a big predator has to undergo constantly the way you find a tiger is you listen out for the animals that are alarm calling around you see a buzzard in the uk and it's being harangued by songbirds you see a great white a big great white swimming around and it will have everything from seals and sea lions mobbing it to, to fish constantly mobbing it underwater and obviously the, the the whole array of remora and pilot fish and other things that are tagging along for the ride you know, we we've seen them constantly being attacked by sea lions guadalupe fur seals that are a conventionally mobbing them uh, b you know, that whole honest singling thing of, of showing them that they are a, 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 fit, a much too fit target and not worth going for that is their life the suggestion that they undergo horrific stress from the presence of water is it's just it's just not right it's just not true and if it was then they'd go they'd swim away which sometimes they do if they're if they're put under too much uh, pressure but overall, although this is a, a, something i can get very heated about i struggle to come down on one side or the other and i would love to know what you all think because i don't think it is black and white i think it's something we can get very passionate about i have huge respect for anyone who who really believes that we should have no impact on animals and that we should do no harm we should have no interactions but 
we just don't live in that world. We now live in a world where sharks can only survive if we want them to, which, you know, sounds like horrific hubris, but it's true. And so I kind of feel like in some cases, it's for the greater good that we get people learning to love sharks. And if that means feeding them, then so be it. Uh, please do like and subscribe or hate and subscribe, you know, whatever you think. I'd love to know. And put your comments in the section below. I promise I'll try and read them.